hey guys, how's it going today? A very mean moon emoji man keeps saying very mean, untrue things about me, and it's uh, it's kind of annoying. I mean, the guy just continues to lie over and over and over again, and I don't see how anybody could take this morbidly obese, intellectually disingenuous person seriously. I mean, he just continues to lie and lie and lie and lie. And he honestly thinks that I'm not going to make fun of him or fuck with him in any way. Well, he thought wrong because I'm sorry, Miss Mr. Moon Emoji, but you're full of shit. Uh, my favorite part was when he did this 51 minute video that I couldn't bother to get through five minutes of without shaking my head because he just lies about everything. <sighs> My first lie that he went through was he claimed that, uh, you know, Keemstar hired me to smear this guy as a pedophile. Well, that's not what happened at all. You see, what happened was is Keemstar wanted to find out exactly who this person was that was basically uh, sending legal uh, cease and desist letters to a 15-year-old uh, named Lieutenant Cobra. And the thing is, is... I normally wouldn't care because I don't give a fuck about YouTubers. I don't care. Other than to make fun of them, I see no point in talking about them. So Keemstar messages me and tells me that Nick told him to uh, to hit me up and uh, have a conversation with me about this. And he informs me that this guy sent a legal cease and desist uh, notice to this kid that criticized him. And I was like, well, that's kind of messed up. And he said, yeah, the guy's trying to get his channel shut down and struck. Which I thought wasn't exactly fair to the kid, and we 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 get into a group. We get into a group, and uh, you know Nick's there. He's there the entire time. So we start you know digging into the group. You know I, I find where the uh, where the law firm is. It's not listed on the website, but I found where the where the law firm was registered to, and it was registered to a paralegal that had herself on the website. She was running the law firm out of her house, and it turns out it's like one of those fly by night. Uh, small little law firms where all the all the lawyers don't really work at like an actual law firm, but what they do is is they get paid to you know take uh, cases you know remotely, and they basically um, you know they'll take the case, uh, they'll pay the little law firm a small little cut, and you know they'll take the majority of the money, and, and that's basically how it runs, and uh, they'll get you know, lawyers that are, you know, not really in-house, but, you know, could be reached via email. And the lawyers will write up little, uh, little cease and desist letters and different things to, uh, you know, scare people. And Lieutenant Cobra got one of those. So we were basically trying to figure out who Just Destiny was. And we start looking into it. And at first I was like, okay, well, maybe it's this guy, Michael Sherman, that lived at the address. Because it seemed to fit. The guy played video games. He had his own channel. He kind of sounded like Just Destiny. So we thought that it could possibly be this person. But we couldn't confirm who it was, per se. So we're just, you know, spitballing ideas. We bring we bring Nick Rakita on. Um, and he looks it up. And uh, we wound up finding out that somebody named Michael Sherman uh, was actually listed as a sex offender in New York. So we were like, oh, is this him? So we wanted to see if it was really him or not. And I said, oh, maybe that might be uh, why he could possibly uh, have gotten so angry at Keemstar for saying, do you touch kids? Also, hey, hey, what's up, AP? Hope you're doing well, dude. So I'm like, okay, well, let's see. So... Nick Rakita looks up the person and finds out that they're actually in prison right now. They're, they're currently in jail and they couldn't have been just destiny. So I was like, okay, uh, I guess that's not him. That, that's literally what I said. Okay. I guess it's like a false positive. It must be somebody with a, with a similar name. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's, let's see if this guy is actually like in New York now. And that was all that was said. Now, when I watch, uh, you know, Dickless uh, DiSnorio talk about fucking 
uh, what's going on in the video and I have to listen to Tubby Small at number one uh, lie about what's going on, I'm like, okay, well, he clearly just fucking edited that. He clearly just edited it because that is not what was said. And as I go through the video, I see that he is literally cherry picking different parts of the conversation, cutting out all of the responses and then lying about what's being said. Because what Nick DiOrio left out was the fact that Nick Rakita himself uh, never once was involved with that, and neither was Keemstar. All they did was try to find out who the person was. Keemstar never asked for somebody to get hacked. Uh, neither did anybody else in the entire chat. Nobody ever mentioned swatting or attacking somebody. It was all just complete bullshit. Now, I listen to fucking, uh, you know, the snore machine over there, Tommy CP, who likes to piss on children in uh, public pools, uh, talk to uh, his fans about, oh, name me one time I've ever been wrong. Well, let's see. You're wrong about Tonka. He said he was going to knock out Andy in less than 10 minutes. You even lost $100 on that one. Uh, you were wrong about Keemstar when uh, when he when he let it go that he helped you pay your child support for your kid. You got into an argument with him on Twitter in which you openly admitted to an entire audience of people that you don't technically take care of your kid because by German law you're not required to, which just made you look like an even bigger scumbag. Uh, what else has Tommy been wrong about? Oh, he, he claimed that Ta Tonka never lied about the uh, the MMA videos and that Tonka was well-versed in, in fighting. Clearly, he was full of shit about that, too. I mean, Tommy, you just continually are wrong about things. Uh, oh, oh, don't forget about the time that Tommy was, uh, was, was sitting on a live stream with one of his friends having a beer, and his wife called him and said, hey, our kid is going to the hospital because he's blue and choking, and I'm concerned for the child's safety. And he said, no, nah, I'm going to sit here and drink for another 45 minutes and not get up or even be concerned about my child. Uh, that, that, was, that was quite a weird thing that somebody did i mean if somebody called me and said oh my god your child is turning blue i'd be getting the fuck off stream and going to check on my child but no tommy sat there and bullshit it with some guy from uh from uh yorkshire about how he had been there years ago and they sat and drank and tommy oh you sure you don't remember me you sure you don't remember me yeah it's uh it, it's really great parenting there tommy you're you're a real great guy you, know, you really got to say that when somebody says, can you name one thing I've done wrong? Uh, that, that's not something you really want to say openly, Tommy, because I can name hundreds of things you've done wrong. You're, you're pretty much a loser. Uh, same thing for Nick. I mean, Nick, come on, dude. Are you really going to sit here and play the Tubby Smollett game with me? Are you going to honestly act like you, like you were you were so victimized? I mean, this is a guy who went on to uh, that Augie guy's stream and said that his mother has lived in absolute terror for weeks. For weeks. His mother has been in constant terror. She hasn't been able to sleep. She's absolutely terrified because in mid-November, I called the house and I said, tell your son to stop stealing all of my lasagna. That's that's all I said. I said I did it on Ralph's show in front of him and Keemstar. And apparently, according to Tubby Small at number one, his mother has lived in constant terror and cannot sleep at night. She gets up and she goes, Oh, my little papido, what am I going to do? Oh, no, they're coming after our spicy meatballs and our pasta sauce. Nobody's worried about you, Nick. Nobody even fucking remembered you existed. I had no idea that Nick was living in a constant state of terror because I forgot that Nick even existed. I forgot his name. I forgot his big, goofy, round head that looks like a saucer plate with a mouth. I forgot everything about the guy. Yet he cries about me and claims that his mother has been in constant terror about a prank call that I did more than six months ago. And he's just, oh, I don't even know, Keemstar. You see what he does? I'm pretty sure a lot of people see what I do. They just don't care. And that's what Nick doesn't get because 
Nick isn't used to having an audience. He's just used to being a, a Tommy CP nut hug warmer. That's all he does. He, he sits under Tommy's ball sack and he, he, he garners the, the beads of, and droplets of sweat that drip off his balls and he drains them into his mouth for sustenance. Other than that, he has no real existence or ability to produce anything uh, from his own mouth other than absolute lies. I'm just going to sit there and lie about you and claim that you did all of this shit you didn't do. His big thing was he he made three major claims. One, Keemstar tried to smear a guy as a pedophile. That absolutely never happened. Ever. Even one time. Uh, I found out that the guy could possibly be a sex offender. I said, let's find out if he is. Uh, we brought Nick Rakita in. Nick Rakita verified that it wasn't actually him. It was somebody with a different name, uh, with a different age that lived in the same area but had the same name. So we immediately wrote that off. But we still wanted to know if Michael Sherman was the guy that was Just Destiny. So we wanted to double check that Just Destiny, if he lived in New York or not. But then, as we're going through it, I go, oh, wait, you can't do Skype resolvers anymore. Microsoft enabled supernoting. And I'm like, I even say that in the thing. And I'm like, well, I guess we can't find them that way. Well, somehow, that's twisted into we tried to hack his Skype, even though that has never been mentioned even a single time. It has never been said by anybody on the call. And never once does anybody say, let's attack this guy. The only thing that we ever say through the entire call is that we just want to find out who this guy is so that we can notify uh, Lieutenant Cobra's parents so that they can take legal action against this person. That's it. That was all that happened the entire night. Nick had no problem with anything that was going on. He even volunteered to go out to the fucking person's house and take pictures of the house and show that people were living there and then even asked and offered to go and open the gate and see if anybody was inside the window. He said that on the call. Um, it's so strange that he never left that in his, his amazing video because not only was he willing to go to the person's house to verify if they were actually there or not, he was willing to open up the gate and go inside and see if somebody was there. But do you see that, Kim? Do you see what he's willing to do? Do you see? Do you see who he is now, Kim? Are you happy? Yeah, you had no problem with what I was doing originally, Nick. You thought it was funny. You're just like Ralph. You're completely disingenuous. You have no problem with what I do as long as it fits your needs. And you have no problem with me fucking with somebody as long as it's somebody that you don't like. But could you imagine this fucking guy? Imagine you sit down to dinner. You pull your little hungry man out of the stove. You sit down... You grab your fork, crack open a bottle of vodka, pour yourself a shot. Maybe open up a bottle of whiskey, pour yourself a glass. Throw some ice on, and then you just go, I'm going to relax. Take a long, hard swig of that glass. You start eating, and then the next thing you know, you look over. And I swear to God, with a stern face, all you see is this. You just see this massive, pockmarked, acne-ridden, round head that looks like somebody had an allergic effect to hair dye. And he's just getting closer by the moment. Just. Do you feel better now, Keem? Keem, do you see what he's doing? Keem, are you happy now? What is it enough, Keem? What is it enough? Are you happy now? Are you happy now, Keem? Are you, are you, are you upset? 
Do you know what's going on now, Keem? Can you see what's going on? Do you see the kind of person he is? You knew, Keem. You knew. You knew what was going on. You knew the kind of person that this guy was. You knew what a prick he was. You knew he doesn't have morals. You knew what he was doing. I was talking. I was talking to Tommy. And Tommy was laughing at you. And we were both trying to avoid the fact that we're losers. And, and I said to my mom, Mama, stop it. They're not going to take the spaghetti. And I and she kept saying, Oh, my little Nicholas, my bambino. I don't believe you. They want your little meatball head. And I just kept saying, Are you sure about that, Keem? Are you sure? Can you see it now? Is that all you need, Keem? Is that the kind of validation that you need? Because cause I know I need that validation. And I'm very upset right now, if you can't tell. Let's go ahead. Let's move this over. Do you, do you see it now, Keem? Is it funny to you now? Is this what's going on, Keem? Keem, are you happy now? Are you happy? Are you happy right now, Keem? Is this, is this the kind of person that you want to support? You brought him into the group chat, Keem. I told you the whole time. I knew who he was. You knew who he was. Don't pretend like you didn't know who Zoom was. Don't pretend. Okay? Don't pretend like, like you didn't know that Zoom was a monster. Okay? He's been calling my mom round the clock for weeks. And I swear to God, I'm not lying. You might think that I'm lying, but I'm not lying. Okay? Let me just tell you this, buddy. You're not fooling anybody. Are you happy now, Keem? Are you happy? Can I tell you something right now, Keem? Me and Tommy, we set you up the entire time. We knew that you were going to call Zoom, even though we perfectly planned this. We knew we were going to get him in. We were going to ask him to do something. And then we were going to say, Aha! We got you, Keemstar. We got you. The smoking gun. We're going to say this guy tried to brand him as a pedophile. And then we're going to make another wild-ass claim. And neither one is going to be substantiated because we're fucking retards. We're fucking retards. We can't plan anything ahead of time. That's literally all he did. He sat there the entire time laughing his ass off about the fact that that fucking, we found who this guy was. He was very interested. He was more than happy to fucking go to that guy's house. He was more than happy to take pictures of the person's house. Because that's the person, that, that's where the pictures came from. The pictures that Keemstar posted on Twitter of the law firm's location with the addresses. Nick took those. Does he tell his fans that though? No, because that would require being honest with your fan base, and Nick just isn't about that life. The only thing he's about is being a fat crybaby and making all the attention go on to him. He constantly claims and lies and reiterates his lies, and then he has Tommy CP substantiate them. And Tommy CP is willing to do anything that doesn't have to revolve around him or Tonka or looking like an idiot. So he's willing to bring Nick on board and let Nick lie. So me, me and Nick, we knew the whole time, guys. <laughs> Prove me wrong. <laughs> well, remember that time I was never wrong? Uh, I bet I bet you guys will never be able to prove me wrong, even though there's hundreds of fucking recordings of me getting blown the fuck out when I'm wrong. <laughs> you can never beat me. My name's Tommy CP, and I just talk about wrestling and fighting sports, even though I've never been good at a sport in my entire life, which is why I play video games all day and cry about other people on the internet. Boy, we certainly got him pretty good, didn't we? <laughs> oh, yeah, we certainly got him. Oh, boy. My name's Tommy CP, and I'm going to be sitting here talking about the news and wrestling for three hours. And I'm going to pretend like I have any understanding of sports in general because I'm totally not out of shape and in my 40s and, and never really that graceful to begin with because I'm just a boring, untalented hack. But I'm going to sit around and I'm, I'm going to talk about sports all day because, you know, that's what people do when they're in their 40s. They sit around and they talk about sports and video games. And, uh, you know, rather than get a job and, you know, supply money and income and put food on the table we're gonna live off the german government and then we're gonna talk about how everybody else is a loser we're gonna laugh at keemstar that's got millions of dollars and millions of fans on youtube and and let me tell you something a little broke guy from germany 
who couldn't even pay his child support without Keemstar's help, is going to get together with a morbidly obese failed hockey player who couldn't even make it as a goalie in a community college hockey team. And they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna pull the smoking gun and they're gonna shut down a channel with like over four and a half million fucking subscribers simply because they got a recording of him saying something in which they set this up. That's what that that's how Keemstar is gonna fall. That that's how Keemstar is gonna fall. This tubby fuck and a forty year old loser who probably got picked last in every single gym class that he ever attended, are going to get together and they're going to take down Keemstar. Are you kidding me? Does anybody honestly believe that? Tubby Small at number one, and the guy that got picked last in every gym class he's ever been in, are going to get together to take down Keemstar. And the way that they're going to do it is they're going to lie. They're going to lie, they're going to misrepresent what actually happened, and then they're going to threaten people into following their narrative. You know, it, Nick isn't above reporting AP and trying to get him banned on Twitter. He's not above dragging AP into drama when AP was in the hospital. He's not above lying and, and, and misrepresenting what actually happened to Augie as long as Augie will show it to his audience. At this point, it's just completely disingenuous. I don't know how the fuck you can lie to your fans like that. How can you honestly have the balls to make a 51-minute video in which you cherry-pick random parts of the conversation but leave out all of the other parts of the conversation so that you look like less of a piece of shit? And then your big groundbreaking thing is, oh, I'm going to release the whole thing Saturday? Really? That's going to work? You're gonna release the whole thing Saturday, and people are gonna see that you edited it, and they're gonna look like you're a, you're gonna look like a fucking idiot. But then again, you should be used to looking like a fucking idiot, Nick, because you kind of look like a fucking idiot every time you get on camera with Tommy and try to fucking pull a gotcha. Because what's the gotcha gonna be? The fact that you drove to this person's house and took pictures, but then you want to cry about me bullying people in real life. Wow, that uh, that makes a whole lot of sense, man. You know, I take things too far because I do shit like head over to Madison Square Garden and put up a bunch of signs that Ralph's a pedophile, and I think it's funny. But you can drive to somebody's house that we haven't even confirmed could be the person, take pictures of their house, and then offer to go into the person's front yard and take pictures of who's in the window. You also offered to go back the next day and knock on the door and take pictures and record of whoever was in the house. That's on the recording, too. Are you going to show that, Mr. Transparent? You going to pull that out, Tubby Smollett? Is that is that your noose? Is that your It's MAGA Country? Is, is that what it's going to be, Diorio? Are, are you going to show that? Is, is that going to make the final cut? Is that on the cutting board, my friend? You left that part out. You left out the part that you told Keemstar to talk to me. You told Keemstar to come to me. You sat there. You joined the call. And you sat in the call with me for over four and a half hours. And didn't say a fucking word. Not one word came out of this tubby little fuck's mouth. 